Hi guys, I'm Justin Rose and welcome to one of the favorite rooms in my house, which is my pup view putting room. Um, and obviously you can see to my right hand side are some of the trophies that I've been able to win only when you putt well. You only win when you putt well. So uh, this room is very, very inspirational for me. I come down here generally, you know, late in the evenings after the, you know, the day is done, maybe after I've done all my training. And for me, this is such a great bonus room. It's an area where I can get 20, 30 minutes work done. And I feel like those little blocks of work really keep me on point with my putting and obviously keep giving me opportunities to, to win some more trophies. So as I take you through maybe some of the drills that I do in the room, I think I start off very, very simply. As you can see here, I've set up a putt. You know, one of the cool features here is I know exactly how far this putt is. It's set up at 8.3 feet, which is, uh, you know, sometimes it might, you know, it's varying lengths, but one thing I always try to do is, is set up the, the Zen putt stage, which is what I use here on, on the flat level to start with. Um, and then I use a, a mirror and that's the most important thing. Obviously, if you use a mirror, um, what, the, one, the one main reason for me using the mirror is for getting my eye line dead over the ball, because I think for me, the optics of, you know, putt view, the fact that we're learning to see the break and we're learning to see lines and how the ball actually reacts on the green. For me, how you, you know, operate with your eyes is very, very important. So, you know, for me, using the mirror is, is just a key, key little step. You know, it's one of the most simple things you can do. But when you, the reason for setting it up is that you need to set it up on a dead flat surface. If you set up the mirror on any type of tilt, it affects your eye line. You know, and obviously for you to see your eyes in the mirror, you're obviously having to manipulate where you put your eyes in space. So if it's, if it's dead flat on the ground, obviously I can now see that my eye line is dead over the top of the ball. That's one of the things I, I really focus hard on here. Obviously it gives me a reference point for straight as well. There's a couple extra lines on this mirror which tell me if my club face is aiming correctly. And I'll get up here for just two or three minutes and I'll stroke a few putts. And there you go, look, nice reaffirmation here, nice putt it tells me. So anyway, I will spend um, you know, the very beginning of all of my putting sessions, just two or three minutes, making sure my posture's good, making sure my eyes are over the ball, but the main reason for my eyes being over the ball is so that I can really trust my eyes when I'm starting to see breaking putts, which I'll get to a little bit later. So after using my mirror, I will just sort of you know, move that to the side and then I move on to a little bit of laser work. This is a little piece of equipment that I've been using maybe for five or six years now. And you know, I tend to use it in my hotel rooms a lot. Um, you know, I might just try and find a straight bit of tile or a wooden floor or something straight in my hotel room. Um, and for me, I just use this putting mat just as a, a way of making sure I have the laser on dead square, because that is, I'm looking for perfect feedback here. And once that laser's on nice and square, I will then use this lovely thin line which is obviously adjustable with putt view. That's the great thing. You know, you can, you can optimize it to how you see fit. You know, you can be the width of the hole, you can be the width of the ball. But on, for, for this application, I use the thinnest line that putt view gives me. And as you can see with this, I'm really trying to control my stroke in a way where I'm operating the red line on my, on the, that, that this laser is projecting to, to sort of run up and down the, the projected line that view gives me. But the most important thing to realize here is that this isn't a stroke that is straight back and straight through. If I go straight back, straight through, you can actually see how the laser is twisting. I'm trying to swing the sweet spot up the shaft plane. And by swinging the sweet spot up the shaft plane, that's what projects the laser on track. And then obviously the laser is also telling me if my club face is square to the shaft plane. You know, if there's any rotation, I can see that I'm either gonna push or pull here. So um, I'll get up here and actually the great thing, when I'm in a hotel room, often I won't even hit a ball. I will just really focus on my stroke. And for me, my feelings are up and in. You know, I'm trying to get the sweet spot of the putter, the center, the CG of the putter working up the shaft plane. And it's something that's actually a lot trickier to do than, than you would think. And that's one thing why I, th I feel like my setup and how I stand to the ball is so, so important because everything I feel like is on the shaft plane. Um, you can see the one thing, especially with how I grip the club, I have a claw style grip, but one thing I really work hard on is that my forearm, finger even, are in line with the shaft, and then my right arm comes around and also is, is in line in the same plane as the shaft. So everything I work on with my posture is to make sure that when I move my shoulders, when I swing my shoulders, I'm working up and down that shaft plane. 
So yeah, this is a drill that's really kind of served me well out on tour and uh, it's something that's just good discipline and good habit for me. And I feel like it, it allows me to have a lot of my technique done away from the putting green that when I get to the putting green, I can focus what's important, which is the whole other skill set of reading greens, you know, pace work, the stuff that actually matters in terms of getting the ball in the hole. Sometimes a perfect stroke doesn't mean you make putts. Sometimes you've got to learn to understand the contours and the reading of the greens, which is obviously where putt view comes into its own. Okay, so after I've taken care of my stroke work, it then kind of gets into what I sort of start to feel like is performance work or skill, you know, um, improving some skill sets. You know, and a, a really important skill set for putting well is green reading. And what I can do now in this setting is I can really learn to calibrate my feet and you know, go, okay, well, what does 2% feel like? And I can stand here and go 2% feels like this, and I might switch this way. Because sometimes we, you know, we can have a, a shorter leg or a longer leg or whatever it might be, or we can, we can be better at feeling it one way or the other, but just really try to learn how to, to calibrate in my feet what does 2% feel it like, feels like. And then some people will hold the putter like, like this or a club like this, so they, they feel the tilt. Some people will feel it in their belt buckle or their belt line. You know, some people just simply feel it in the pressure of their feet. So um, this is a really great tool in, in order for me to do that. But I think the most important thing now is, is sort of transferring what 2% feels like into what does 2% look like. And I think one thing that I've always noticed when I'm playing in pro-ams with amateurs, everybody underreads putts. And you know, I've adopted the Aimpoint method, um, you know, Aimpoint Express, I suppose. And it kind of, it's not a perfect science, but it's very close too. And it kind of gives me what I call my ballpark read. So for here, for here, for example, I would stand, we're inside 10 feet, so I stand on the ball. If you begin to get outside 10 feet, you'd stand one, one, one step behind the ball. But if I was just to put a ball here, I'd be standing up and I'd be putting up two fingers because we know this is 2% and it's amazing how absolutely perfect it is. I use the inside edge of this finger in the middle of the hole and the outside edge of my middle finger is where my aim point is and it's exactly on the line that putt view has projected for me. So this helps me build the picture of my putt. And I've really begun, you know, I've hit so many putts on putt view over the years that I've really built this into my routine. I would say, you know, four, five, six years ago, I really struggled to, to visualize my putts, but having sort of learned to see the, the projection on the ground that putt view gives me, I've learned to adopt that in real time and in real life. And you know, I even do a drill out there on the, on the putting green where I will roll some balls on a true roller and I'll put little dots of chalk down to kind of simulate what the putt view system gives me. Um, obviously the faster the greens get, the closer you move this to these two fingers to your, to your eye, the wider it, it projects the brakes. So obviously the faster the greens, the more the ball breaks. And that's something that's really key at Augusta and why I think sort of local knowledge or, or experience, is, experience there is so important because your eye is still only seeing 2% break. So your brain thinks, oh, you know, it's not gonna break that much. But because the greens are so fast, that 2% breaks more than it would at your local club if you were putting on nine, you know, nine on the stint meter. So, you know, speed of greens is critical as well. So, um, um, so once I'm into this mode, I will then get down behind the ball. And if I was out on a real green right now, I would be having a, an imaginary piece of chalk in my left hand and I would be painting what I would feel is the perfect roll. Like I'd be seeing the shape of what I feel because I've made the decision. I've made the decision it's a 2%, which has given me my aim point. But now it's like, okay, the linear, the linear decision has been made because I also do use a line on my ball. So, okay, 2%, it's about 10 inches out. I will line up a ball 10 inches out. But now I want to forget about living in the straight line world. I now want to create the picture of the putt because that builds in the speed. You know, if I'm just using a straight line, I can hit it too firm and, and the ball's not going to take the break. So now, you know, by building in the shape of the putt with the chalk line or, or the projected line here, that gives me the speed that I want to, that the ball wants to enter the hole. That's really, really key. And then the last phase of my, of my routine is I walk in and I keep my eyes on the, on the target and I walk in and I track my eyes back down the projected line. I balance to the line on the ball. I then send my awareness out to the hole. I'll track my eyes down that projected line. I come back to the ball. I trust it. And as you can see there, I was just on the top side of the line. So slight user error, I started the ball a little high, but it tracked the shape perfectly. 
So, you know, my start line was a little right, but the shape of the putt, you know, the 2%, everything did what it should and the ball went in the top side of the hole. So, um, you know, I think what enabled me to make that putt was my visualization and my, my speed control. And I think that that's what the system gave me there. If I was probably thinking 10 inches out to the right and I pushed it a little bit with, with, with too much speed, that ball had no chance of going in the hole. And maybe there's a, maybe we can show you like a cone here of, of what your parameters are of actually what you have available to make a putt. You know, so you, you doesn't have to be a perfect science to make it. You're dealing with this type of, um, type of setup. So, you know, my, one of my coaches called it a chiquita, like a banana, you know, it's a banana brand, but it kind of looks a little bit like a banana in the sense that you have a low side and you have the high side and, you know, anywhere in there we can make the putt. So that's good to remember when you are reading greens is that, you know, it's not one size fits all. So as you can see, the putt that I just made there, I was on the high side of the, of, of, of the shape here and uh, we were able to make the putt. So, but I made the putt through good decision making because I learned to feel what 2% looked like. I used a ballpark read, which gave me enough break. And then I built a good enough picture to build my speed into the equation and I made the putt. So as we know, life isn't perfect. Some weeks you don't putt as well as you would like. And uh, you know, in scenarios like that, if I'm thinking about what might have gone wrong, you know, my prior tournament, I, you know, this, this room and the putt view technology gives me the ability to come back and uh, kind of troubleshoot and uh, work on a couple of things that I feel like may have been a problem. And you know, one of the first things I will always check is, you know, is it my stroke or is it my reading of the greens or can it be something simple like your alignment? So I always try to come back to basics and, uh, you know, in this scenario here, you know, I, I, I do line up my ball. So I feel like if you're going to choose to line up your ball, you better do it well. So, um, you know, for me in this scenario here, I will line up the ball and actually my first attempt at it, I can see that my line's actually a little bit left. So this nice thin line that putt view gives me really kind of can help show me how well I'm lining up the ball. So I've made a slight adjustment there, a little bit more to the right. The other thing that I really work on is that when I am lining up the ball, I try to get my dominant eye, which is my right eye, over the top of the ball. I feel like sometimes if you, if you misplace your head, you can start to get a little bit of distortion there. So you know, really try to focus using my right eye. I feel like that is now very much down my line. Um, so once I feel confident that my that I've lined up the ball well, it then the next job for me is, am I starting the ball online? Is my stroke okay? Um, so I've placed two balls here, about a foot in front of me, with just enough space to get the ball through. Um, and this is gonna tell me, okay, am I pushing or pulling? Obviously I'll see which ball moves. If the right ball moves, I'm pushing it. If the left ball moves, I'm pulling it. And if I can get up there and make a free stroke and guide it right between the two of them, Okay, I now know that it's time for me to start working on my picture and my speed and building the shape of the putt because I know I'm aiming it okay, I know I'm, I know I'm starting it on a good line, so maybe it's now my, my speed or my reads were a little bit off. And I feel like I like to work on shallow breaks like this when I'm a little bit off with my putting. I think the shallow breaks tell you a little bit more about your accuracy. Sometimes when you're putting on big breaks, you know, the scope of making the putt is a little bigger or you can underread it and pull it or, you know, so from that scenario, I feel like working on the shallow breaks is, is really, really important. It requires a little bit more accuracy. It's funny because a lot of people think the straighter the putt, the easier it is to make, but actually the straighter the putt, the more accurate you have to be with your alignment. Perfect. I mean, well, touch under speed, like it just didn't quite go the foot past, which is the calibration. I like, I like everything to roll about a foot past the hole. That one would maybe have been six inches past the hole. So it went in the right hand side. So, you know, that's kind of the adjustment that I would now try to make on the next putt. Um, and I wouldn't make it through a conscious, you know, hitting, hitting the ball harder. I would try to really visualize the shape and, and trust that my body is going to make the adjustment. And the other thing that's really, really important is to keep a free flow of the stroke. Darn it. So I think the one thing that I, uh, 
I do work hard on with my putting is is the rhythm of the of the of the of the stroke, and I feel like I've over time I've actually quickened up my backswing so there's not so much of a hit at the ball. You know, I very much work on a, a two to one tempo, so I like to really feel like I flow the putter. And the ball, oh, you see, I just hit the left hand ball there, didn't I? That is my tendency, and that's why I like to practice this putt, is I have a slight pull bias in my stroke. So this for me, this setup here is, is very, very important and uh, gives me the type parameters that tell me, and I think feedback is what we want here. Um, so hitting the occasional ball left is, is fine. It tells us what we're doing. We can make the slight adjustments. So, you know, obviously I'd like every putt to be perfect, but in a scenario like that, it actually gives me good feedback. It tells me what's going on. So, you know, I, I, and I kind of, I, I quite like to see that type of scenario happen. All right, let's finish on a good one. Perfect. So thank you for spending a little bit of time with me and um, you know, enjoying a little bit of the insight that hopefully I've given you into my putting and my process. Um, but I would just encourage you all to go out there and have fun with putting, keep loving it, keep creative. And you know, if you can, get yourself one of these. It's the best toy that I have at home, that's for sure.